just gonna start recording our session. So we've got it on record now. My name is Melissa Souza, and I am the Senior Wellness Coordinator in the Athletics and Recreation Department at Seneca College. And welcome to week four of our meal prep series. Today's topic is snacks and pro tips. So excited to give you guys a couple of recipes to discuss uh, some snacking ideas and uh, maybe to get a couple questions and answers uh, at the end of our session as well. And hoping that you learn a few things here and that you enjoy our session. So let's get started right off. Um, that uh, we're kind of rounding out here and we're, we've talked about um, our meal prep in the sense of planning and um, storage. And we've also talked about grocery shopping tips and tricks. So again, we're just rounding out our sessions here with um, some snacks and pro tips. Um, discussing a few of my go-to recipes, my personal recipes that I use for weekly snacks. And we'll be talking about some tips uh, to stick to a meal plan when it comes to snacking. So to get right into it, snacks, snacks, snacks. Who doesn't love snacks? I love snacks. Um, so my personal go-to snacks. Now, um, this doesn't mean that I don't have, you know, the um, cheat snacks, if you want to call it that. Um, some of these things are kind of my cheat snacks now, which is nice because I've I've gotten myself into a routine and I've done so much meal planning and prepping each week and I've been doing it for years uh, that I know what works for me. I know what works for my body, um, what ingredients um, agree with me and don't agree with me digestively. And so I've um, you know, swapped things here and there. And we'll talk about swaps as well. So this is um, my personal uh, go-to snacks. And um, I'll talk about why I think each one is important and kind of why I've built it into my snack regime. So um, first is oat muffins. So I bake these at least once a week. Now I've started to double batch them, just meaning that I've bought two muffin tins that um, make bake 12 muffins and I bake 24 muffins at a time to save myself some time because these muffins freeze wonderfully. So why not just do one big batch um, at a, one, in one go? And then really I can also, if my kids didn't love them so much, this would probably last two weeks but it doesn't, um, but because I like them nice and fresh, then uh, I do freeze 12 of them every Sunday and then I keep 12 out. So oat muffins is definitely a big thing for me. We'll get to that recipe, I'm gonna share it. And it's because it's such a go-to for me and um, I think that you'll actually enjoy it. So uh, next up is low sugar granola. Granola is um, an easy go-to for a lot of people. So it's just um, basically, uh, usually people use oat flakes or oatmeal um, like that, that you would cook oatmeal with. And a lot of the store-bought granola is very high in sugar. So they can, they sandwich it in that it's got whole grains and that um, it looks very healthy because it's very in that, in that grayish blandy color, like that wheat color, which I think a lot of people think like, oh, it looks natural, um, it must be healthy. But the problem is, is the sugars. So if you make it at home, uh, it's so much better for you. So there's so, so many recipes out there for granola and you can put whatever the heck you want in there. So if you want some raisins, if you would like to have, um, you know, a little bit more sweetness, you can use um, coconut or cane sugar. Those are the kind of the sweet sweeteners. We'll talk about sweetener swaps as well. And um, when I make my own granola, uh, that's what I do. And then you bake it in the oven. That's really all you, you would do. And it's, it's just a peace of mind in the sugar department. If you're trying to cut out sugar, making your own homemade granola is a sure bet to lowering the amount of sugar intake that you have if you enjoy granola, which is delicious on um, sometimes on its own, just as a, a cereal. Sometimes it's a cereal topper for something like that's more high in fiber, like um, brand buds or something along those lines. Uh, you can also use granola in um, with yogurt as a really, really great snack. So I didn't mention Greek yogurt on here, but that's one of my go-to snacks as well, I would say, because it's high in protein and I'll put some fresh fruit in there and I will put, I, I didn't call it a snack. It's kind of my go-to dessert, to be honest, right now, but Greek yogurt for sure, uh, high in protein. So uh, banana bread, we've talked about banana bread on uh, one of our uh, last videos. I think it was two weeks ago now. And um, I cook banana bread as well. I, I'll bake banana bread 
in lieu of oat muffins. So I haven't been on a banana bread kick, but because my oat muffins have bananas in them, I almost feel like I'm like, you know, not cheating on my banana bread uh, weekly thing. I used to make banana bread all the time. So it's not far off in the sense that um, with the oat muffins, it's just easier for my girls to take the oat muffins to school. And I incorporate things like blueberries and raspberries in my oat muffins. So, um, but banana bread is a great one. And again, a, a very easy one to swap out. Any baking is, and we'll get to that. Veggies and fruit huge go-to um, and it's just easier when they're already prepared for you. So we can buy all the fruits and veggies we want, but I think a lot of people, um, when they're out of sight, out of mind, if you have your, uh, for example, a bowl of apples uh, on the countertop, you're more inclined to eat them. So a lot of people do like to keep them on the countertop just so that you'll reach for the fruit. Some people like to chop up your fruits and veggies um, and leave them in the fridge in containers so that they're an easy, quick, open and grab. Um, I find when I'm feeling snacky, I am just reaching for something that's quick. So that's the big thing about snacks is about preparing, right? Um, so preparing my fruits and veggies, even if it is just cutting up a pineapple. Um, if I have to do it when I'm feeling like I want a snack, it's probably not gonna happen. I'm probably gonna open my cupboard and see if I have any like store-bought granola bars or something along those lines. and. If I have them, I'll probably reach for those first if I have to chop or cut something at that time. So keeping them um, prepared is a big thing when it comes to that. Um, I also make my own um, tahini dip for my veggies. Um, that sometimes is just um, a, a nice way. It's called a high and low snack, and we'll get to that as well. And that just means that um, the tahini that's higher in good fats um, helps to sustain me or to keep me full for um, when I'm eating my veggies. Sometimes I find if I just have like a couple of carrots and celery, like that's not getting me anywhere. But if I dip it in hummus or a tahini dip, um, it definitely helps to uh, sustain my fullness from that snack. Oat and date bars aren't really far off from energy balls. They're really just um, a quick way of combining and, and dates is a, is a good binder. So you would put that in to um, keep things together and you would use oats in that for as well. And there's so many different things you can use. You can use unsweetened coconut bits, um, which are great for these types of recipes. And um, you can combine all sorts of things. There's so, so many recipes for both of those things. Energy balls, you can use um, your PB uh, or an, an almond butter for your protein. A lot of people actually use protein powders in them as well, um, that just so that you get, you're still getting your, again, healthy fats, but you're getting your protein as well. A big thing for me is that I like to try to include protein in each one of my snacks, just so that I make sure that I'm getting the protein in. Uh, I know that it's good for my, me and my body when I'm getting workouts in. It's also just good for um, our body for renewal. So I know protein's important for me and that's why I try to incorporate it in my sex. So that's the Greek yogurt that I was talking about or um, the tahini or hummus, those types of things um, will add protein. And again, it's what, and that's just another reason why I will dip my veggies. Um, boiled eggs. Okay, so this is another big one, protein, and it's also got your healthy fats. This is my favorite, favorite, favorite snack. Um, it's an easy go-to grab. I boil 12 eggs every Sunday and I put them in my fridge and I have them every day. I 100% have eggs every day and I usually have them in this form. They're super simple. I usually have them as a post-workout snack. And again, they help to sustain me when I I need to just get a quick snack in and move on. And I, it takes two seconds to boil them takes two seconds and the storage of them is everything. So easy, easy, easy. And it is such a complete balanced snack, in my opinion, that um, I'm always a big, big boiled eggs person. And if you don't love boiled eggs, then there's so many other choices here. But if you do like eggs, um, start boiling them up and keeping them in the fridge. You can chop them up and put them in salads. You can make an egg salad and put it into a pita. Um, there's so many things that you can do with them as well. They're very versatile, but I just eat them plain like that. I just put a little bit of salt and I put um, some fresh freezed, freeze dried chives and it is so yummy. I, I eat, like I said, I've, I've been eating them every day, honestly, for probably like three years now. Um, it's my go-to snack. Protein shake. So um, sometimes protein powders are controversial. Um, you know, if they can be a bit expensive, 
I literally have just gotten into Amazon or Walmart and I usually buy a brand that's, um, I've tried a vegan protein that's made from a pea protein. Um, it's like that for people that have digestive issues, um, sometimes that's a good thing to look for is a pea protein, um, which just means it's protein is the derivative is, is peas, green peas. Um, but you can also find um, a whey protein. So it's got your milk proteins. It's usually higher in protein, but sometimes it's um, digestively um, can upset a few people's tummies, not often, but for some people, if you have any sort of dairy issues, um, then you might wanna just try to look at your veggie protein powders. I love having them on hand because they are, again, if I have a snack and I doesn't have protein, I can easily just grab a, pro a scoop of protein powder and some cashew milk and make myself a quick protein shake. I typically add in banana and spinach and greens plus when I make my own protein shakes at home, but I always use cashew milk. I find it's thicker, it has less sugar content, and um, I'm not getting that, um, again, sometimes there's inflammation is kind of connected to dairy. So I try to stay away from it as much as I can, but I'll eat it Greek yogurt. Like I said, I just if I have a choice, um, for my shakes, I like to use cashew milk just to just to um, stay away, stay away from cow's milk, um, only for the inflammation issue for me. Applesauce. So um, I've gotten into making my own applesauce, which literally means you go to the store, they have all this massive bag that's all usually like three or four dollars, and it's um, it, I get the imperfect apples and. I don't even know what that means. I think they're just misshapen and they are great. You peel them down, chop them up in like to little bits, like bite-sized bits and toss them into a pan. And I put a little tiny bit of water at the bottom and turn on the stove and I just keep stirring it until I, until it like gets to my um, consistency that I prefer. I like it when it has like a little bit of chunky bits of apple in it. And a pro tip here, Try it with two different varieties of apples and it just adds a little um, depth to flavor when it comes to applesauce. So that's been my no new go-to. Honestly, it like kicks the store-bought applesauces, but it has texture because you have um, like a bit of a bite to some of these pieces. It's just, it's way nicer than applesauce that you just bought in the store. I don't sweeten it at all. I'll put a little bit of sprinkling of cinnamon on it when I'm feeling like something sweet. And again, my kids go bananas for it. So especially if those big bags are on sale, they are so worth it to make your own applesauce. Freeze is lovely as well. So you can throw it in the, in the um, freezer. Nice cream. So I have my recipe for nice cream. Um, and basically it's just, it's not ice cream as in the sense that we'd be using cream because that's the, um, I guess, you know, the treat part of ice cream. Um, our regular ice cream. This is with actual, um, made with cashew milk or any sort of um, other nut milk that you'd want to use and um, bananas to sweeten. So it is actually a really, really yummy recipe. It's great for this time of year. And I'm going to share that with you right now. So let's get into our recipe. Um, this is chocolate nice cream. So it's a great ice cream alternative. Um, you're going to use three frozen bananas peeled you're gonna use a quarter cup of cocoa powder. Um, so I would put three to four frozen bananas, depends on the size. If they're a bit smaller to medium banana, I would use four. And um, free, froze, blah, 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 freeze the bananas. I, if I'm gonna use it for this, um, I'll, cause I'll freeze bananas whole, like in their peel. But that's if I'm using it for something like banana bread or my muffins. If I have this kind of on my back burner, like, oh, I'm gonna use my bananas that are ripening on the countertop for this, I'll chop them first and then I'll put them in a in like a freeze freezer Ziploc bag. That way, when I go to do this, I just toss them and they're already in chunks, which is nice for this recipe. So I would suggest doing that. Um, you're gonna get out your blender or you can use a food processor for this as well. If you have either or either or works, I've used both. Um, you're gonna throw in your quarter, quarter cup of cocoa powder and that's where your chocolate piece comes in. And your two tablespoons of almond butter or peanut butter, that's where your healthy fats are gonna come in. And um, it also helps for consistency and smoothness. Uh, and a quarter cup of your milk of choice. So you can use um, cow's milk here. You can also use one of the nut milks that I've suggested. Um, and I would highly suggest buying the unsweetened um, nut milks. And then again, if you wanted to add in sweetness here, you can add extra banana for sweetness. You could also drizzle it with honey if it's not um, to your sweetness desire. Cause it is, this should be like sort of a, a dessert replacement. 
Um, doesn't take long to make it all. You toss all your ingredients into your processor or your blender and you pulse. So if you have a blender, this just means you're like turning it off and on quickly. Um, and that's a pulse in a blender. If you're in a food processor, you literally use the pulse button and it just means it turns it on and off quickly. And it gives a sharp, quick pulse to your bananas. And so it's basically breaking them down. Once they're pretty much broken down, you're gonna scrape down the sides of your processor or your blender, and you're going to um, then get it uh, blasted on a high and leave it um, in either or a processor or blender. And you're going to wait until the consistency becomes nice and smooth. You can enjoy it right then and there, or you can toss it into a container and throw it in the freezer for a couple hours. It'll harden up a little bit and that way you can scoop it out and you can add it into um, or onto uh, a cone. So it's really, really nice. It's a nice uh, dessert alternative and uh, it is super healthy and it is guilt-free. So that's why I love this as a snack. My next snack recipe that I wanted to share and I've only put on two here. Um, but I will share them after in an email to everybody that signed up for this course. So um, if you missed that, don't worry about it. We'll send out an email for you. This is my weekly go-to muffin recipe. So um, it has, says blueberry here, but I've replaced blueberries with raspberries successfully. I have also um, put in some strawberries, which I find the strawberries actually add a, a little bit too much wetness, I find. You really have to chop them up small if you're going to use strawberries. Uh, but blueberries and raspberries work perfectly for this. So uh, ingredients are our uh, three large ripe bananas, a quarter cup of maple syrup or honey, large egg, teaspoon of vanilla, a third cup of coconut oil melted, a cup of oat flour. So if you don't buy store-bought store oat flour, um, which can be kind of hard, and they also, because it's kind of trendy right now, they kind of up the prices on you. If you just buy quick oats, like in the oatmeal section or in the baking section, and it's just quick oats, you can even buy um, old fashioned large oats is another kind of name that they have. And you put them in a blender and you literally just get till it comes to a flour consistency. I turn it on high, I dump them in, turn it on high. You've made yourself some oat flour. So um, I would try to make it on your own if you can. And it's just a, it's a gluten-free, again, uh, I try to stay away from gluten. So you'll get that in your wheat flour. And uh, it's just for my, my guts and my digestives and that I know that it's just a wee bit healthier for me. So that's why I use um, if you're wondering why oat flour, that would be why. So then you're going to throw in your uh, baking powder and your baking soda, your cinnamon salt, and um, your, you can also, uh, th there's a, you keep the cooking oats in, in whole as well. So you do the flour and then there's a quarter or half a cup of cooking oats. So um, same thing, it's just, it's cooking oats and any of those oats, you can use any of them. Um, the minute ones, the large ones, it doesn't matter as long as they're oats. Um, then you would fold in your blueberries, um, fresh or frozen, once you've mixed your wet ingredients into your dry ingredients. And uh, then you would add them into your muffin tin. And I always grease mine if I'm not using um, a, a liner. You can use a liner if you like. And I use coconut oil to do that and fill them up about a third way up and pop them in the oven. So they are about 20 to 25 minutes, I would say, until a toothpick is inserted in the middle and it comes out dry. And they are great for freezing. They are great for an afternoon snack when you're feeling like something sweet. And I find because they do have the healthy fats in them, as well as they have the, the carbohydrates that I'm looking for, and they also have the protein that I find that they sustain me no problem. And that's why it is probably one of my favorite go-tos for healthy snacks. Let's talk about some swaps. So swaps means that uh, it's a, like a this for that. So instead of using this, let's try this. And these are just healthy alternatives to um, a lot of these are for baking. So oat flour, as I mentioned, I will use oat flour instead of wheat flour and because they're because it's gluten free. And um, that's really the only reason why that I use it and the difference in it. I just find for myself that, and a lot of people, I don't think um, it's just widely known that not people, people have intolerances, um, not necessarily that you have a, a, an allergy uh, to gluten, but it, it's, it is hard on our system. 
So I try to eliminate it or limit it as much as I can. And this is one way that you can do that. A portion of the flour, you can use protein powder. So if I have like a vanilla, that's why I always have vanilla protein powder on hand. I can sprinkle in um, a quarter of the cup that they're asking for oat flour. I'll use three quarters of a cup and then the other quarter, I'll use protein powder. It just, again, adds a little bit of protein to um, a muffin mix or banana bread. And it also adds a little bit of flavor because it's flavored with um, a vanilla flavoring. So I would be careful if you have like, you know, one of those caramel bake, like they have all these different kinds of um, protein powders. So you might not want to mix a, a protein powder that has um, a funny, funky kind of flavoring if into these types of things. Uh, you might want to just drink those ones straight. Um, coconut oil for anything that asks for butter uh, is always a great alternative. Applesauce for oil. So this is a big one. Um, the oil really is in place for baking for moisture. So it makes your bakings moist. Uh, it makes your cakes, muffins, um, breads, all those things. So I've, I, I play around with this a little bit um, because I also like the fats in the coconut oil. Some people don't and they want to eliminate some of the fats. So um, sometimes if it asks for a third of, of coconut oil, I'll just do half of that uh, will be oil and the other half will be applesauce. And I find that for myself, the moisture is just fine. And I've also um, just, I just not using as much of the co uh, coconut oil. So that's kind of a personal preference and it depends on uh, what you're looking to um, do diet wise and diet, not meaning like a diet, but just your diet as in what your daily intake is and um, in your foods. So if you want and need um, more healthy fats in your diet, by all means use uh, all of the third cup of coconut oil. Um, honey or maple syrup for refined white sugar. I think that one's self-explanatory. Um, it's just, it um, is a natural, it's still sugar and it still has calories and it's still, um, it's still that sweet, bit, but it's, you're just not getting, it's not refined white sugar. So that's why I turn to these when I'm baking as well. Dates in place of brown sugar is always a great one. Um, process them and you can even eat those ones. Um, I sometimes just put peanut butter on them and a little sprinkling of sea salt, like to die for. Um, and I love those as a, as a dessert. Nut milk for cow's milk, we already talked about that. Um, and PB2 for peanut butter. So this is one, if you're watching um, the fats that you have in your diet, PB2 is, um, is just a powder and that that's a brand name. So it's just a powdered peanut butter. It's where the oils have been uh, removed from the peanuts. So the oils removed and then it's, and then it's um, ground down and it's into, uh, it's like a powder. And the powder, it has much less fat in it than a regular peanut butter. So if you're somebody that's watching um, the fat that you're having your intake and, and in your diet, then um, PB2 is a great one if you want to add peanut butter flavoring without the fats. It's still healthy fats, so don't feel like you need to shy away from it there. Again, it's only if, um, for whatever reason, um, you are trying to uh, have a lower fat diet. Let's go on to our pro tips for snacking. So I had said this in my last um, session, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. It it's goes for every single one of our sessions that we've done so far on meal prep series. So it goes for snacking too, because if you don't prepare your snacks, again, like I said, you're just gonna stick your head into the fridge or the cupboard or somewhere or, or get in your car and drive down the street and you're gonna pick up something that um, you might not want to, it just might not fall in line with your goals. If your goals and um, you're, you know, you're, if you're trying to eat a little bit more healthy, this is a way to go 100%. Um, this changed my relationship with food too, I would say. I, um, I ate, I just ate so much more healthy and I watched my body change in ways um, that I wanted it to. So I wanted it to uh, be able to lift more weights and to run faster. And those were some of my goals. And I know that this and this style um, of meal prepping and um, just basically um, preparing has been um, a, a huge save for me and has changed uh, everything really. 
So these are my um, pro tips for snacking, my own personal pro tips for snacking. So individual containers for portion control. I am one of those persons that like, when I open a bag of something, like I just wanna finish it and get right down to the bottom of the bag and then, and be like, okay, there's my snack. But we know that a lot of our, our you know, the products that we purchase, if you buy them from the store, um, they're not, they're sold in bulk, I would say. They're not sold in individual, like just have this uh, bag and that's a snack size. So we've got to control that and look at how much is, you know, if we look at the nutrition value and say, okay, this is how much the snacks um, that it should be, um, that if we had example, 100 grams, that that would be the amount that for me, uh, that would be good for a snack. So I find that I would I will just get my individual containers to help portion control. I will break down if something that's store bought, I will put it into the smaller containers so that I know that when I go to reach for a snack, it's already portion controlled for me, and that really helps me um, with that personality type of where I want to finish whatever I'm started to eat. So if I open a big bag of something, um, that can equal trouble for me. So uh, individual containers for sure is a big, big um, uh, pro tip for snacking. Prep, prep, prep. I've made, I don't think I've nailed it home enough yet. Uh, it is um, absolutely uh, the biggest piece. So yes, going to the store. Yes, writing down on our menu planning and looking at our recipes that we've got apples and bananas and we've got, you know, the cantaloupe and we've looked at things that are on sale. But if we bring them home and we don't do anything with them, that we've gone meal planning, we've gone shopping, but now we haven't done the chopping, we need to do the chopping. And that's a big thing for me. I will have all of my glass containers out. I start chopping up my fruit. I chop up my veggies. And like I said, I, I put them in the fridge and they're ready for pop the lid, quick snacks. Uh, if they're not chopped up, ready to go, they're probably not going to be reached for. And that's a big thing. Um, you don't want to be tossing out food and, and wasting money on food either, right? Limiting temptation. So keeping the sugary snacks at the store and the beverages too. That kind of goes back to our shopping tips. Um, not shopping hungry, making sure that um, the snacks and the things that we do bring and the, the foods that we are bringing into our home um, fall in line with our goals. And that if we are trying to eliminate certain foods that having them in the house, I think we know is probably um, the first thing to do uh, to ensure that we are not having them in our diet. So keeping them at the, at the store and the beverages too. So keeping an eye on things like um, yogurt drinks, pop, um, juice, all beverages that are chock full of sugars that really it, we don't need. Our body needs water. So if you get a sparkling water, even that's a nice alternative to uh, pop. And they have tons out there right now that are flavored without and not sweetened. And they are a great alternative for things that pop if you like the fizz. Um, and try to keep your sugary drinks as much as you can to a minimum. Uh, load up your bag and take it to go. So this is, um, you know, when we're off, I mean, we're not really right now, are we? We're not out and about. But when we do, when we get back on campus, we're going to work we're off and outside of our homes for the day, we need to make sure that we're bringing our snacks with us too. So unsalted nuts, apples, eggs, um, these are great things that I, anytime I go somewhere and I know I'm gonna be out for a bit, um, I usually have a banana, an apple, and I bring my eggs with me. So I have those little freezer pack things and I'll put them in a, like a little tiny lunch bag that I can like roll up quick and it's got a plastic lining inside. And I bring my eggs with me because they're just such an easy, versatile to go snack. And then I don't have to, when I'm out, like I don't have to turn to stores and buy store, store-bought snacks is really hard to stay on a healthy tip when it comes to snacking, unless you go to a grocery store and sometimes they do have things that um, are already prepared and they can be on the healthy side. But when it comes to fast food places, um, it's it's difficult to find snacks that are healthy. Even at our like places like Starbucks and Timmy's and things like that, it's, it's very difficult. I think we all know that we're all get sucked into the, to the bagels and the, and the donuts, right? Balanced snacking, we've talked about that, um, trying to include protein and healthy fats to help us stay full and bring us to our next meal. Uh, that's one of my pro, pro tips for sure is a balanced snacking. The high-low combo. So I said we'd get to this. High-low combo is just that for me, when I have a fruit or a veggie, it's just not enough. It, I need something else to help carry me. So if it's uh, 
if it's celery or an apple, I'll probably add some peanut butter to it, all natural peanut butter that has some sea salt in it. If it is a, um, a celery, I've done as well, celery. Um, and even if you have pita, um, you can use things like hummus. So that's, so you, you get a high as in like, it's got some high healthy fats in it, like peanut butter or hummus. And then you, the low is um, a low caloric index. So celery, your apples, um, pita isn't necessarily that, but it's your carbs. So you can find that that will carry you as well. And then finally a snack mindfully. Um, it's, it's easy that if you get into the habit of sitting in front of the TV and opening a bag of popcorn and mindlessly eating as you're watching, because I do that. And it's, um, it's an easy way to kind of numb out and not think about what's going into your, to your system. So they tell you to eat mindfully at all meals. Same goes for snacking. So we really should be mindful and kind of sit and think about as we're tasting our food, as we're chewing our food, um, focusing on the act of chewing, eating, swallowing, um, literally. Um, and that's what mindfully means. Um, you're mindfully snacking and that you can also follow your hunger cues better. So if you feel like your hunger cues are telling you that you're full, um, to listen to them and um, you know maybe try to watch the rest of your Netflix um, show with just a sparkling water would be my suggestion. That's it for today. That's it for our meal prep series. I hope that you've learned quite a few things over this four week session. Um, we have enjoyed having all of you join us and it's been um, short but sweet, it feels like this time around. Um, if anybody has any questions or comments, please let us know in the chat right now or you can unmute yourself and ask any questions if you have them. If you don't wanna do that right now, you can always email Chris and I after this session and you can uh, ask us any of your questions that you might have in regards to our meal, meal prep series. Uh, we'd love to hear from you if you have comments as well. Upcoming programs, we've got Wellness Week happening. So Wellness Week is starting on April 12th to the 16th, and it is chock full of all sorts of great things. And we'd love to see all of you there. We've got um, yoga happening, which we don't necessarily have right now. We've got, um, We've, we're a sustainable Seneca is joining us. We've also got first Nate, first peoples joining us as well. And we've got um, student talks. So every day there's something different. Head on over to our website to check out the full wellness week lineup. And uh, we can't wait to see you there. Have a wonderful afternoon. If you haven't got outside today, I really suggest that you do. Um, if you're watching at this in real time, it is a gorgeous, gorgeous day. I wish you all a wonderful rest of your semester. Be well.